This is Tommy's Outdoors, episode 32. And today, with my guests, Madeleine Weber and Greg McNamara, we are talking about photography, outdoor photography, and also about outdoor sound recording as a bonus or maybe as a complement to the photography. Um, so I attended uh, Madeleine's and Greg's seminar or talk a few months back during the uh, Ivora Peninsula uh, Learning Landscapes uh, Symposium. And um, what struck me was that going out and taking photographs or kind of hunting for the right image is uh, kind of similar like uh, hunting for an animal or going fishing or maybe hill walking. It's a full-blown outdoors activity. And um, all the observations and, and uh, a kind of feelings that Madeleine shared with us, it, 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 you know, it struck me like this is something that every outdoors enthusiast gets it. Uh, and here we have a photography and um, sound recording. So I thought it's a excellent, excellent opportunity to talk to Madeleine and Greg uh, on the podcast about uh, their outdoors and what they're doing in the outdoors. And so here we have this episode of the podcast. And just before we jump right into it, uh, folks, visit Madeleine's website, uh, www.madeleineweber.com. Uh, see those wonderful photograph photos. They're all kind of framed like a like a pictures, like a paintings, uh, big formats. Um, and I'm sure you're going to, you're going to choose something because they're beautiful. Um, there's obviously shipping and you can, you can purchase them while you're visiting the gallery, but they can also be shipped to you. So yeah, the link is in the description again, uh, visit her website. And, uh, now without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Madeleine Weber and Greg McNamara. Okay, so uh, we're on. Um, I'm today with Madeleine Weber and Greg McNamara. How are you, folks? Very good. Thank Hi, Tommy. You. <laughs> um, so we are in a beautiful county, Kerry. Mm -hmm. What's the what's the how you pronounce the name of the area? Well, there are many names for the Skelly Coast, uh -huh. or the southwest part of the Evora Peninsula, Evora Peninsula. or along the wild atlantic way or the skellig ring <laughs> right, right 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 now we're in emlock trina emlock moor okay yeah so it's exactly it's... halfway between waterfall and balance skellix i always have like a super hard time you know pronouncing like a local, me too local. the town <laughs> names, yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh maybe for our listeners uh could you could you folks tell what you what you do Hmm. It's actually going to be in the, in, the, in the title of the podcast, but just for like... <laughs> All right. Well, um, my name is Madeline Maria Weber, and I'm a landscape photographer, a painter, and just a lover of Kerry. And I uh, opened a gallery here in the heart of the uh, Skelly Coast in the Geltacht area for the last three years, I think. And it's a one of a kind gallery because people, when they come and visit us, they actually see us living here as well. So you have the turf fire, you have the animals, the chickens, yeah. the artwork on the wall, the cottage. Well, it's not a cottage, but you get the feeling of it. So it's a very yeah. different kind of experience when you come here as if you walk into a commercial gallery somewhere in town. Yeah. And I love it. And they too. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a it's an awesome place because you're you it's, it's truly like you know we we walking in and you have a dogs and cats and a fireplace and all those beautiful pictures on the wall yeah. and you know it's 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 great and and Greg you're also kind of because you you kind of work together right yeah so I'd be Madeline's personal assistant <laughs> all right awesome. he's carrying my bags okay. up the mountain <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes no. and back down again <laughs> right um, but you're but, uh, but you're also recording sounds of nature right. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, I guess in the past year, it really got my interest mm -hmm. and I've been out kind of exploring the landscape just through the eyes of audio, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I just find it, um, I, I suppose, very healing because I always noticed before in the past of going to the beach and while, especially online when beach stuff or any kind of visual stuff pops up, the sound is always missing. When I go to the beach, I always listen. I always take in the sound of the waves, the sound of the wind, you know. 
Yeah. Um, so I just decided I wanted to go out and explore and uh, see what I can do to capture that. So yeah. I've been working on that mm-hmm. for the past while of um, capturing different spaces, you know. And yeah. we're very lucky here because directly behind the house we have um, the Inni Estuary, which is just a mm-hmm. beautiful spot at night time. You get mm-hmm. incredible sounds there of the nighttime birds flying over and talking yeah. to each other. Where it's no, not windy, the sounds are... Yeah, are, are, are still, mm-hmm. still... You know, the place where I live, I, I walk in front of the house and I hear the birds on the, on the beach. But that's seldom. Usually, I just hear the wind howling. Mm. <laughs> Probably have that here yeah. as well. So we like we met at the, I suppose it was called symposium Ivor Learning Landscapes, mm-hmm. and it was like, quite a few guests out of out of that on their podcast. And you know, I saw your your I, I think your your workshop was like a eyes and ears. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, so let's 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 start with the eyes, and you know. The thing when I was when I was uh, so first of all you're also you're also from east of Europe and I'm from east of Europe mm. so it was like immediately hey, it was like hey <laughs> like, you know like a, a kind of similar background yeah. to me and it's like so so that's uh, and Greg you're Irish right yeah originally just up the road in County Limerick all right but here is home now all right mm. I'm saying the same thing See, the home same. is here now yeah people are yes. asking are you going home for Christmas <laughs> yeah home no is here. why <laughs> home is here. <laughs> exactly and uh and he was like oh you know we are like a uh, eyes and ears and the nature mm-hmm. and obviously being being a uh, outdoors podcast and outdoors website you know i i watched the photos obviously uh that that you're that you're presenting in the landscapes and you were talking about like you you know you're sitting for hours to capture the mm-hmm. frame and all mm-hmm. that and i was thinking like boy that girl gets it you know that's exactly like this is like a quintessential outdoors you know you don't you, you, you do stuff but you're kind of can sit there and just enjoy yourself right yeah i mean i'm i was thinking about it why i actually have a blast in nature why is that why am i so happy and i come to the conclusion that whenever you go out there and nature always surprises you. You always get something because it's constantly performing. The elements are working with each other. Um, nature is balancing the forces. And while it's doing that, it creates an absolute stunning beauty. And if you are perceptive to it and you give that space and time, that means you bring your body, move it out there, outdoor, yeah. and you become the observer, your mind gets blown. And when your mind gets blown because you see things you can't even imagine, what happens, I think, is all your future thoughts, your past thoughts, your worries, your concept of yourself just disappears and there's a silence in the mind mm. which creates a moment of happiness because you're right here, right now, you're present. And mm. um, that's, I think, is what I'm addicted to, actually spending time with me, but not me as a person, as a concept, but me as recording seeing feeling yeah. and it's so peaceful now nature can be a beast right <laughs> let's right. get that straight right and yeah. i always when i talk like philosophical like this this is from a safe observer point mm. so um but because we have the luxurious way of you know we are protected we have warm clothes and we can sit on a beach and watch oops, watch a sunset or um, watch a violent storm from a protective space or distance mm. oh uh, you know i go out there i always get something it's like having a birthday party every day yeah. i know i get I something get, i get i, I get it. you're you're really like you're becoming like a part of the nature you're kind, yes. of, you're kind of losing yourself into that and it's just like a part of nature and it's like well and it is our home you see that's i was thinking about it because nature is not man-made so mm-hmm. when we put ourselves into her space into her hands so to speak Mm. it triggers things in us which um, are so old and ancient which you cannot conceptually maybe grasp right but your Mm -hmm. body and your spirit knows and you feel connected on such a deep level of existence these are the, the moments which you need to treasure and you need to expose your te- yourself to them because they're very deeply healing they kind of put your messy mind mm. into place again you know yeah it so, kind of <laughs> shut, it kind of shuts down yeah. the mind, the, like the, we and, and we spoke on the podcast many times on that and i think that's a, that's a common theme in the outdoors that even if you're out there cycling mm. or i don't know rowing 
for like six hours straight or eight hours straight and then someone is asking like what you're thinking about for eight hours like nothing, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. it just just goes right yeah. so 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 it is, it is fascinating how people mm -hmm. who are doing such a different things whether it's angling or cycling or photographing like, like it's the same thing it's like yeah you go out there you're kind of becoming one with your surrounding you kind of going to this meditated meditation state mm -hmm. you know on your mind it's like time just mm -hmm. just flies you just you just don't don't know it. <laughs> i have a, i have a question for you mm -hmm. so obviously when you're when you're uh uh taking photos and you're in that like deeply um soul activated state <laughs> for for the for the one of a better word like mm -hmm. you have like an emotional attachment or do you have emotional attachment to the photo because then you 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 know you're putting that photo on the wall and someone can go in and, and mm -hmm. buy it do you have like an element like you know it's it's hard to part with with like a outcome of your of your work an outcome of that you know that beautiful day there you you, you know and you have a photo and say great mm -hmm. photo or are you just saying like you know i'm not selling that photo it's mm -hmm. it's not for sale it's mine <laughs> That's a great question. Um, well, I actually don't have an attachment. I um, because first of all, there's such an abundance. So nature, I observed nature now for uh, carry nature for the last 13 years. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the same spots, and nature never repeats itself. So there is an abundance of new, exciting light performances mm -hmm. which you can never get tired of. So I know there's always some uh, coming a new superlative. Superlative is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and for, I actually have to go back a bit because when I started capturing nature, it wasn't my motivation wasn't to create a portfolio which other people can enjoy. It was a purely um, uh, self-experienced state, so to speak. Mm. And I was attached to the moment, the beauty of it. Like, for example, if you turn around the wild Atlantic wave here that I took that mm. actually when listeners... Um, go to my website, then they can type in wild Atlantic wave and then they know actually what I'm talking oh. about. This was a very bad storm, but the unique thing was um, there was no rain, so there was sunlight and I was sitting there in awe and the ocean turned emerald green, which a lot of people like when tourists come into the gallery, like, oh, is that color real? And the locals, when they come in there, I know it, that's our color. I, I saw it with my own eyes. It's yeah. that unique, distinct color. And I feel attachment to capturing that moment of beauty, yes, in that way. But later on, I realized when I was sharing my pictures, I noticed that it has a feedback system for other people because that beauty and inspiration can travel through the picture to another spirit, to another mind, to yeah. another heart. And I found that so fascinating and enjoyable seeing people coming in here and looking whoa they have the same feeling which i had when i had the 3d experience yeah. with all senses involved yeah. and it's captured in that image and they can take it with them and it will emirate or how do you say shine that energy constantly you know when they surround themselves with that image so i love that and that's huh. why i absolutely adore the idea of giving these images to other people right so you have this like yes now i i i i i, I I achieved what I what I meant to. I I captured the moment and give it to you. And when you see the same reactions, like yes, that's that works. Yeah, because we the, the like the person who comes in here and looks at the wave and says, "Whoa, um, this man or woman goes into the same space and mind where I went when mm. I saw it." I was like, "Whoa, I cannot imagine." It's like when your mind stops because your word stops. You're like in shock, but mm -hmm. a positive shock, and that's a state of mind which when no thought is active, no inner dialogue, which is complaining or whatever the problems are of the moment, right? It's all gone. And I love seeing people in that state. It's the right. best state ever. Right. And we all find different ways of getting there, right? Some, there are some unhealthy ways of getting there, like drugs or whatever. And then there are very simple ways like free nature, which is around mm. you at any time. Yeah. And you put yourself into it, you create space for that and you you yeah. can be very happy. Yeah, yeah. Greg, anything to add to that? You have the same kind of experience when you're out there recording? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, again, it's just a different world for me because Madeline is the visual person. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm the audio, our kind of base person. Mm -hmm. So I always, 
I kind of get get the excitement from the sounds, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're lucky here that we're so close to Rean Road Beach. There's times where I'll be inside at night time and there'll be noise, and I'm wondering like, where's that noise coming from? And I go yeah. around, and then I forget it's the sea. Yeah. And I just go to open a window, and then I realize it's the sound of the ocean because it's the way it's hitting the the beach and coming yeah. in, and it's the way the wind is blowing, and it's like you're right there, you know, beside it. Yeah. Um, can I add something to it? Because um, I grew up in Berlin in a big tower, <laughs> yeah. so we had a big motorway. And I actually realize sometimes that the ocean sounds like a motorway or the other way around. The motorway sounds like the sea. It's like that big growling sound, right? Which um, in, a, in a gentle setting, like you have no wind, it's, it doesn't trigger fear in you. But if you would stand on a beach on a stormy day and you hear that deep sound, you know, yeah. Whoa, it goes straight into your guts, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, it kind of resonates in a lower part of your body, yeah. you know, or the higher, I think for me, the higher sounds are like maybe head level, ear level, but those lower deep sounds, which are probably what, under what, uh, 60 or 50 hertz, you know, they mm-hmm. kind of resonate in your lower part of your body, so even yeah. inside your whole body as a whole, you know, and yeah. you feel it. Not only through the ears, but kind it, of yeah. like through the... All senses, yeah, like yeah. very... And when we had the uh, Ivra uh, learning landscape um, event and I was listening actually to Greg's part, I realized because I'm such a visual person, I take in the sound, but not consciously. So I'm like, whoa, my eyes are, look at the color, look at the shape. Oh, and there's a bit of sound. Right. So what I changed since then was I actually was consciously closing my eyes and focusing on the sound, which I never, I never give it enough attention and it's fascinating like it's literally like a little play right you're doing with yourself you um it has a totally different effect on you if you isolate a sound from a picture it Mm. becomes its own thing a very unknown sound actually yeah because you can more focus on it and you can pick up the parts of the sound that you never thought that were there yeah and you realize how much it has an effect on your emotional state when you look at a beautiful landscape picture Mm. you know it's it's the sound gives you a lot of vibration and um, um, a peaceful response inside you um yeah i I found that really fascinating um and if you isolate a sound actually it's it's like how does the sea actually sound if i ask you now tommy how does the sea sound you you might think you know but actually depends it's a very abstract sound yeah (laughs) Yeah. but the sound of the sea i like is like in a very quiet day like a summer quiet day and the sea is like almost flat mm. and you're walking at the mm-hmm. at the at shore you can you can so hear the like, lapping along yeah, the shore yeah, yeah. like a gentle yeah. like a, yeah like you were like, like oh it's kind of like a calm and uh, you know you you, mm. you don't you, you it's almost hard to imagine like a raging sea that you see in the winter during winter storms right now obviously we have like a storm season and uh, we're we getting hammered right now yes yeah. but we can't complain we had a great year yeah <laughs> <laughs> Nature <laughs> sure. was kind to us. We're we're very lucky down here because we have so many different types of beaches mm-hmm. that every beach has its own sound. Right. And then obviously when the weather changes, it's another different sound again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, the day I think maybe it was a, maybe three months ago, there was a, a very very stormy day. So I I spent that day heading around to Reen Row Beach, Balanskelligs Beach, uh, Saint Finian's Bay. I think one or two other places as well. Maybe just off um, Balanskelligs Pier. Mm-hmm. And I recorded there, and it's all all the same day, all within four or five hours of each other, but like very different sounds of that storm coming in the beach, and incredible, yeah. incredible power behind it, you know. Do you, do you, can you tell the sound of the storm coming? So it's not quite there yet, but is like is is there is there something like that? Because obviously, visually, especially. But sometimes visually you can you can see like a front coming the the clouds and it's like kind mm-hmm. of is sunny and nice but you see like oh that's coming is the same thing going with the sound can you can you can you tell that the weather front is approaching like a sort of a that's something I probably haven't looked into mm-hmm. enough yet um but it depends on how the swell is reacting yeah i think oh yeah i definitely found it that day especially in saint finian's bay mm-hmm. that it's kind of saint finian's bay is unique that the beach is so small that the waves come in they're concentrated concentrated and all that sound is mm-hmm. kind of like a tunnel effect mm. comes in and hits you yeah while i was on yeah Reno beach and it's such 
green rubbish is near, a mile or more in length. So you have all that strong wave action coming in. Yet in that small space in Finian's Bay, it was a stronger sound. Yeah. Of only, what the beach is only maybe 100, 200, 300 meters wide or something. Yeah. But it's just about that force being funneled in, yeah. you know. The surface paradise, huh? Incredible place, mm. yeah. yeah. I always find it fascinating kind of see how the weather is changing or approaching and mm -hmm. kind of see like a visual, like like a big cloud coming or, or, or something. It's like yeah. you can witness that and you see that, like this is this is changing. And I'm, ex I'm explaining that this is exactly what, you're, what your folks are, are experiencing being out there. Well, I actually, because I studied the weather for so long now, I figured you can predict up to 70% and then there's 30% mother nature. Mm -hmm. You can't figure it out. What, what time forward you can predict? Um, no, well, hmm. it's only a small radius, so I could probably predict hmm. to Kelts or yeah. how far away is that? So Kilani would have a totally yeah. different climate. No, no, but I, but I mean, like, oh. obviously you're in, like, any book about weather mm -hmm. tell you that, like, you know, you, you no computer model can replace, at, at least still, can replace, like, a local knowledge. No. You yeah. know, local. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, like... Can you tell the like you look at the weather forecast and you look at the pressure and say like you know I know how the weather is gonna be like tomorrow or can you do like three days forward? Yeah, I could. Well, for me it's useful to know. I I know the visual ap appearance usually ah. of it, so I can look at a satellite and I see the cumulus clouds and mm -hmm. the, uh, the the ice clouds and mm -hmm. I can figure out based on experience oh, okay we will have a f stunning sunset now i'm sometimes really off you can ask greg mm -hmm. <laughs> but usually it serves me very well um but then there are these moments and thank god they are there where nature just pulls a, sh a quick one and you just yeah. think what the hell just happened yeah and it's amazing right so um there's one example greg and i we were climbing up bolo set mm -hmm. one day and um i, I was carrying your bags that day yeah <laughs> you did <laughs> thank you and it was just so nice oh, you're so oh. sweet. <laughs> i didn't give him a choice <laughs> um and the the weather was all dull and a gray sky there wasn't any rain and i was like hmm so we were waiting for the sun to set um and with a focus on skellig michael which is my favorite place we need to talk about that later all right and so nothing happened we were sitting there for an hour or whatever and i decided my senses went wrong then mm -hmm. and i said let's go home there is no point of having a dual picture because mm -hmm. i only take pictures when i'm physically shaking mm -hmm. then i know there's such a um, compact energy in that mm -hmm. moment that it will transfer to 2d because most people don't realize when you see something you sense you feel tr and you see 3d and when you minimize it on 2d mm -hmm. and you take all the senses away then they're like, why does this picture not look as good as it, you know, as I mm -hmm. saw it? That's the reason. So you need a really compact story in the picture and yeah. energy. Um, so I, I didn't think we get that. And he was like, no, let's wait. Let's go this way even, you know. And I was mm -hmm. like, Jesus, there's no point in doing that, but let's do it, right? Mm -hmm. And thank God, because um, after probably 20 minutes, there was a window of one minute where exactly above Skellig Michael opened a little window and... Mm -hmm the pink sunlight of the sunset came down like a blessing through that yes yeah if pink you want red. to see the picture yeah. type in my website in the search op option skellig michael blessing and you will mm -hmm. see it. and it's incredible like mm. and, and never happened again i went there many many times again it never happened again yeah and so yeah with incredible shadow that was nature performing you know the 30 percent of chaos where yeah. she balances forces and creates that beautiful thing which in a human mind obviously gets interpreted into yeah. a certain way in yeah a certain it's, way. it's it's fantastic you know and uh, everything that you're that you're saying is like like a truly outdoors experience oh it's, it's, yeah. it's like listen before before i'm gonna jump into other questions that i have can you give us a little like a story? How do you how do you find yourself in Ireland, right? Because we we said like you know we are we are we are from from Eastern Europe. <laughs> uh, so how, what's what's your story? How it happened? And I know that's a rain story, but uh, yeah, uh, the rain brought me to Ireland. Um, that's a good place. To like. <laughs> good, uh, well, yeah. Well, I was I found myself studying graphic design and art in Münster, which is a beautiful town in west uh, in the west part of Germany, and. 
for my degree, I was longing for an adventure. I was bored out of my mind, mm. indoorsy, you know, mm. not much nature thing going on there. And I, I was longing for an adventure. And I remember I was traveling the year before to Scotland, the bigger brother of Kerry, I call it, because everything is bigger oh, really? and more rough. And, okay. But they're kind of the same. That's interesting. And so I knew Scotland and I was like, uh, actually, before that happened, I remember it was raining and I was sitting in my uh, apartment and looking out the window and, and, you know, rain in cities is horrendous. It's mm. really boring. It's ugly and it's there's no fun with rain mm. in cities. Yeah. Nature is a totally different story. Because it's kind of dirty, like in the city it's dirty, dirty because you have all this grime yeah. from the road and like with water, it kind of creates like this substance. Yes. It's not nice. Well, in nature, it kind of is like a cleansing Clean yeah, and stuff. you have the horizon line. You can see the clouds moving, the rain. Sh- so there's so much beauty. Uh, and in cities, also the the building are getting even more dull and dirty, mm-hmm. dark, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're getting wet. Yeah. So I was looking at my window, and my focus shifted to the window itself. And there were raindrops on the window, and I noticed in the raindrops the reflection of the house opposite of my house. Mm-hmm. and there was a beautiful warm light in it and I saw these raindrops and they looked absolutely stunning yeah mm-hmm. um, I actually will put it on the website maybe type in raindrops I will put it up tomorrow yeah. and I was like yeah I'm doing a book about rain that's it why <laughs> not I love water water is mysterious mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. full of enigmas nobody really gets gets mm-hmm. it what, what is it uh, uh, it's the base of all life and I said yeah so I will focus myself on water rain Mm-hmm. Rain Island makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Total, total sense. And once I tune into something, I'm like a pit bull. I'm like a net nice pit bull. I'm like focused and I find a way, right? Yeah. So I was writing to a hundred uh, potential sponsors. And 99 said, no, what the hell? What do you want from us? <laughs> and one said yes, which mm-hmm. I'm really grateful to this day. Uh, funny enough, a water pump company ah, <laughs> in Germany. <of> Vito, <laughs> which, um, thank you. And uh, so I could finance the car. I had six weeks a car and um, I was studying everything about the north of Ireland. So mm-hmm. the north part, uh, Donegal. And mm-hmm. uh, for some reason, north sounds great to me. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There was no sense behind it. And mm-hmm. um I arrived at Kerry Airport for some reason. I had booked Kerry Airport. I don't know why. And I noticed the town name, Waterville, on the map at the airport. I was like, oh, look at this name. <laughs> that's a sign. Waterville. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's it. Mm-hmm. My whole plan was gone. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about the south or southwest. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to Waterville. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and so I went down there and yeah, everything is destiny. Right now yeah. I'm living here, but... Um, I found myself having, we, ha- we were having a heat period for four weeks. So my first four weeks, there was not a drop of rain and I was panicking. What year was that? <laughs> that was 2004 or 2005. 2004. I can't, okay. Okay. F- okay. I have okay. to check it exactly. <clears throat> And I was sitting depressed in the hostel and everybody was like, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? What's wrong like with her? Wrong with first her? four <laughs> weeks of nice weather in 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> so until I got my act together and, you know, I mm. saw Carrie from the best side ever mm. uh, and fell deeply in love. And mm. um, because I didn't know anything, um, I remember I was driving one day through to San Finian's Bay. Mm-hmm. And San Finian's Bay, I mean, everyone who knows San Finian's Bay knows it's it's like this little piece of isolation where like you have everything the juicy green fields the the cliffs the emerald water it's stunning mm. and um I, i i really loved it so i decided to go there next day again and next day i look at the horizon and i see two islands there they weren't there the day before and i was like <laughs> did they float by or what, what just <laughs> happened so that was my first contact with skellig mm. skellig mm-hmm. mike and little little skellig and It was kind of magical, which describes my whole relationship to these two yeah. islands since then. Um, um, yeah, but Skellig is another thing. So, yeah, so in the last two weeks, we got hammered with rain. So I got my I pictures. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> I was uh, interviewing people, locals, mm-hmm. tourists, what their relationship is with water and rain mm-hmm. and was obviously capturing stunning mm-hmm. moments but your 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 work that you were doing was was it only pictures or was it like a entire the idea was to create a limited edition book i called it uh, oh, water book. gold okay um, because i think water is so those simple. those interviews find their place in a, in a book as well exactly yeah oh, so right. you have the poetry of the person and um, their thoughts in regards to water 
and mm. uh, stunning landscape pictures. Um, so we got hammered the last two weeks. I got beautiful pictures, went back, uh, got my degree. And I, you know, after that, you're free. Like I was young. So you quickly came back. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I didn't have a job. I didn't have a family. You know, I was really, really mm. young. And so I said, yeah, let's go over. I love it because that was my first true um, interaction with nature where I felt at home. Uh, you know, in, in Germany, right. you might go into a forest and think, oh, great, beautiful. Or you see, okay, I okay. traveled, I was blessed. My parents traveled the world with me uh, when I was young. So I saw different corners and mm -hmm. the palm thing. And so never mm -hmm. did it for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just that Celtic mm -hmm. rough mm -hmm. uh, uh, person which uh, suffers after 24 degrees, right? Like, oh, it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. And so I moved over here um, I had a lot of support here, but I got the shock of my life because when you come here as a tourist, you have money in your bag, a car, mm -hmm. and suddenly you have to survive and the island has to feed you, right? Mm -hmm. So the first three years were a bit rough, mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad I stuck through it and um, I cannot imagine going back to Berlin. It's a beautiful city. Yes, go there for two weeks and you get full of inspiration uh, mm -hmm. it's, but that's not my cup of tea i'm a yeah. true country uh, you know i get a blast actually on my own on a cliff yeah and i get it that that's it. it that's my holy grail <laughs> <I get it. laughs> i'm very it. simple right i know i, I do <laughs> you know i don't know if it's the opposite you know <laughs> Great. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a that's a great start. So you're you're actually kind of discover that outdoorsy thing in you here. Yes. You, you kind of like Ireland a, taught me that, yeah. The mm. Irish nature because and also observing the the people, the locals, like obviously Kerry has its own creature, I call it. Mm. Like and that I mean that in the most loving way. Mm -hmm. Um th there are these old paddies which are so connected to their land they they can tell you, Oh, hang on, the two birds flew this way. Oh, we get a bad June. And I was mm -hmm. like what the hell how did you do that tell me about it and you can't you know they're always like the banter you so you mm -hmm. never really get anywhere there but mm -hmm. they know they know their nature you know yeah now i don't know if the new generation has that connection so strong because a lot of people leave because it's really hard to make a living down here but the old people i admire their mm -hmm. their essence is it do you think it's good or bad that they're leaving well, it's a reality. Like it's a tourist season is very short down here in in mm. in, in this at the Skellig Ring, um, and if you can't find the niche, and yeah. you can't. So where where I'm heading with that is like, I I find that the one of the nice things in, about the area and about Ireland in general, but especially in the, in the area, is that there's not a lot of people and mm. I'm not meaning that in a bad way that I don't like people. It's rather <laughs> you have these spaces. Mm -hmm. to yourself so so you 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 go to the beach and you know quite often you have the whole beach to yourself mm -hmm. right yeah, and yeah. it's in in like in european countries it's like very like unlikely you go you know you'll be in spain or italy and you go to the beach and it's like plenty of people like right so i think that's a it, 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 so maybe it's a good in a way well, it's great, yeah, because I'm. I used to be one of these people when I take a picture. Uh, can you go out of the picture, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's changing now, but you mm. know that, like that, it was always distracting me when I would see other people because it takes you out of the moment. At least mm. it was my uh, for me. Yeah, you have a lot of space here and privacy, so to speak. Yeah. And I mean, Darinan Beach and the Darinan National Park, the best beach on earth. Uh, mm. Whenever I go there, there's no one. Where are they all? I don't understand. <laughs> so I'm delighted. I'm not complaining, you know. Yeah. Uh, now, Skellig, for example, Skellig, it's um, um, through Star Wars, obviously got a big promotion worldwide and mm. um, it's now put on the map. And, mm. and are people complaining about that. Well, you, that's you, exactly that's exactly my point. Yeah. People are like, oh, now all these damn tourists coming in and like whatever. I was following that discussion um, from a neutral point first, um, and obviously you will have duality. So one one person will love it, the other will say, "What the hell?" But mm. uh, what I notice is, um, yes, Skellig is getting flooded now, but um, and you get a lot of Star Wars fans who are very focused on the movie. That's their gateway, so to speak, mm -hmm. to the island, and they mm -hmm. just talk about the movie and their costumes, but. Once they enter the island and they come back, they only talk about the monks and Skellig because mm -hmm. the island touches you in ways which you cannot conceptually explain. Yeah. So, you know, that's great. Like It's just a, it's, it's just I mean, a way how they get their way here, but they're, you know, once they're there, they know it's like 
far more than they thought they about. connect with the spiritual essence mm. of skellig and, and you know there are many concepts out there and i honor everyone you know it's up to everyone uh, to choose a way of thinking mm. and perceiving life um there's room for all of us yeah no, yeah. and uh, because the island, the season is very short, so in winter it has time to recover. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are also aspects of it, obviously, which is um, which are not good for the island. So mm. you can't say it's bad or good. There are plus and negatives. Yeah, yeah. Do you think there should be a limit on you know how many people can get there? Or like, I mean, like on these negative things on the island. <laughs> Well, there is, there are is, is a limit. There's only so many boats can go and yeah. drop people off, and they don't, only can take so many people. But I, I think it's what comes across is nature itself seems to take care of that because a lot of the days during the season mm. that people, the boatmen can land, they can't because the weather says, okay, right. not today, guys. Mm -hmm. right, right. So it's like Mother Nature taking care of itself in a way. Yeah, and you know, it's a true dilemma. So there are yeah. no real solutions. I mean, on the one hand side you can say like this is this amazing rock with amazing energy it's history and you you need to understand that people want to see that <clears throat> sorry and on the other hand side you want to protect it because mm. the bird species and you, you don't want to let anyone actually on yeah. it right so how do you find a judgment there you know mm. and you have these different groups of people you have the spiritual seekers the bird lovers now the star wars fans came as a new group to it you know uh, how do you say no you can't go but you can <laughs> no the, uh, what, what for me the most yeah. important thing is that's my biggest concern is the respect for the island mm -hmm. uh, you know when things are getting moved around there and rocks taken and yep. the birds getting yep. upset that's just normal that we it's not good <laughs> yeah don't that's kind of invisible right with, with other people Oop. It's probably my phone. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> right. I think I was just, uh, you know, so uh, distracted with all the beautiful pictures that I'm going <laughs> to turn off my phone. And I was like, oh, turn off the phone or whatever. Like, okay. Yeah. So, so tell me, um, you're, you mentioned the aspect of observing the violent nature mm. um, from the safety mm. how big of a how big of a factor that is and do you have sometimes you know like like go out and uh, you know kind of not be in a safety or like you, you know what I mean like yeah, is, totally. is, it, is, it, is it like sometimes <clears throat> because I know like oh it's cool I have like a big wind coming mm. in and like I'm a, but I'm at home in the safety is yeah. it kind of like a different yeah it's a big deal for me and I always get upset when I see inexperienced tourists mm -hmm. close to the sea who don't know about the swell, about the breath of the sea. Every 20 minutes there comes a big wave. Mm. You, you just don't know, I understand, but mm. I always want to shake them. No, you're too close, go. And yeah. I'm deeply, I have a deep respect of the sea. She's a bloody monster. Yeah. <laughs> true. I mean, it's a true, uh, it's my true feeling. Is she? She's a beauty, absolutely stunning, but I always... Um, I will never put my life in danger for a picture. So mm. I don't know. There's just a, a deep sense of safety in me. Mm -hmm. And there are other photographers who bring themselves into danger to capture a certain picture. And that's totally up to them, right? Mm -hmm. But I would never choose that. So I always try to balance it. And um, so I would always um, never go to a cliff on a windy day because I know about the yeah. gusts and you cannot see them coming and they mm -hmm. take you. <laughs> yep, yep. So a, a deep, she's such a nature is so forceful and she, it's not personal actually. She doesn't take sides. Oh, she's yeah. just creating balance and she, if you're in the way, you're in the way. And yeah. She will yeah. crush you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I even recorded yeah. a, a, a vlog on the, safety for anglers because mm -hmm. that's a group who's on the shore on the cliffs exactly the waves are crashing and like you know i one of my buddies was like oh you know i was fishing but it was so violent and you know all the way and i was like yeah how how did you even you know manage to stand there i i didn't i was squatting like, like come on man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah you know that if you go out there and you have to squat to not be thrown you know of thrown mm. of balance by the wind you probably shouldn't be there with a fishing rod yeah <laughs> greg how about you are you have you been always like being being local here being always like an outdoors person or it it kind of started at some point for you as well well, I, can't, I grew up outdoors, so yeah. I, I grew up in um, top of a mountain called Sleeve Phelum. Right. 
and there was only three houses on the road and the house at the bottom of the road a place called um port nard so you're up top of a, a mountain mm. and there's only three houses and my aunt was a house down below the farm and there was uh, two brothers and a sister living top of the road mm. and the road uh went up to the bog so yeah. i was very lucky having a childhood that was just completely rural completely right right uh protected mm. and nobody who came up the road we didn't know yeah. it was always farmers ah. would land up or people okay. would have up to the bog yeah so we knew everybody you know yeah you um, also knew if someone's new like oh what's this bloke doing here <laughs> Nobody yeah knows but it, it. <laughs> often it would be it could be just a tourist looking for relations you know mm. or somebody related to us somehow and coming up and saying hi mm. but everybody you would know you know and it was a very um for like very enjoyable childhood from that degree and as well as being a kid then growing up there because there's nowhere else around mm. you just go off like i'm seven my cousin used to go off on a sunday for adventures where we mm-hmm. just traipse through fields go climb trees and do yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff like that right. but the climbing trees i, I loved because i mean i think one of my favorite childhood memories is is just going to by myself and climbing the oak tree across the road from our house mm-hmm. um and just sitting there listening to the wind of the uh, blown through the leaves in the trees yeah and the slight sway on the on, on the tree as well and uh, that was just i think they're my favorite memories of doing that so kid. you're you're must be like sitting here with two eastern europeans who could just go like oh outdoors look at that and you go like oh come on <laughs> I grew up in here. <laughs> yeah i suppose I, for, i forget that you know anyway that mm. that i'm here now and okay again here is the same where every, everywhere is outdoors you know yeah you take it for granted like that's yeah always, yeah always, always like that well i think for that reason though it's i really feel at home when there's a storm mm. because when there's a storm i go outside and i listen to the, the sound of the wind through the trees here and it just it just takes it takes me back to that piece yeah. you know mm-hmm. um and if it, it's when that i find the same when you go on and the wind is up because a storm is coming in or it's a windy yeah. day that you go to the beach as well and you just stand there and, and that feeling of the the wind blowing through you while you're standing and listening to the sound of the sea i find that very powerful yeah very cleansing as well I find. yeah yeah I, i feel lighter after there's a lot of people who are actually like winter and like storms i thought that no. everybody goes like oh jeez <laughs> no, like never. yeah well, i think it's just typical irish thing where we we're all talking about yeah great now to have some nice weather and then soon as it is it's, it's too hot <laughs> <laughs> i know i know i was like uh, all the complaints this summer like oh we had like a four weeks of good weather this year as well right like like yeah. back in the day yeah. <laughs> but you see that's also what i realized especially for people like us who move here right mm. um it um we get a lot of tours or visitors here in the gallery and they always ask how do you deal with the weather mm-hmm. how do you what do you do and i said well i enjoy it mm. and they're like <clears throat> sorry um they're like But the rain, how do you deal with the rain? And I said, well, I think the rain project actually actually changed my perception of it. All right. you know, so from, oh, I hate rain, it's ugly, it's blue, to uh, understanding it's a part of nature and actually living in paradise here, so mm. to speak. Um, enjoying the, uh, understanding the sense in the bigger circle, you know? So that's why Ireland is green, juicy green. Yeah. It's part of the rain and- Exactly exactly it's part of the creation and it wouldn't be like <laughs> oh it's so beautiful where it's not raining yeah except it was not raining all the time it wouldn't be that beautiful we when saw, it's not raining yeah the summer everything dried out right and everything yeah. was burned and we're like where's mm-hmm. the green island gone mm-hmm. and the other thing is um it takes a certain personality i think to cope with that weather so in winter mm-hmm. we had years i think it was 2015 we didn't see the blue sky from 2000 uh, from october mm-hmm. till february and that's mm-hmm. tough Yep. That was even where I was, hmm, that's a bit long now. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's like when it's getting wild and messy outside, I even perceive the coziness of a ha- house and the stove yeah. so much more as it makes me happy. I have a yeah. reason to, I don't miss anything outside. I can be inside. I have so many ideas. I paint a lot and mm-hmm. uh, do a lot of stuff. Uh, so it's my time. I go with nature. Okay, nature's telling me, today you stay inside. And I go with it without mm. resistance. Yeah. So I never had, uh, it never upsets me actually. 
um, also the lack of light. Like mm -hmm. I feel so happy to live here. Yeah. That I think balance it. It's a little bit yeah. like that observing the storm from the safety of the house, right? It's yeah. like you, you appreciate more that you're kind of in the safety yeah. and can, can listen, uh, the question I have is about the clothing, like a more kind of like a down to earth, like surely you had to, you had your tips and tricks and you develop a system of, you know, layering or whatever, uh, because your, your, your days, out, you know, a whole day outdoors and the weather is changing and so on. What's your what's your approach to, to, you know, kind of stay warm and not too warm and so on? Well, people always think I wait, mm -hmm. which I never do. It's so boring. Why would I wait in nature? You know, I could never yeah. be a birds photographer sitting there on the tree waiting for a bird to pop up. I'm okay. constantly moving. Mm -hmm. So it's like I obviously you have just normal waterproof clothes with you and uh, Uh, my pictures, all my pictures are literally captured whilst me being stressed. Uh, in a way, <laughs> it's so the, the changes are so fast. So mm -hmm. I'm arriving at a spot. There's a picture. Um, if you type in Valencia, uh, Gokal Mountain, Rainbow, <laughs> you will see the panorama, stunning view from Gokal Mountain towards uh, Karsavin and a big double rainbow. And I saw the, I studied the clouds. I knew the sunlight and the clouds would create a rainbow because I, I kind of understand how the weather works. Mm -hmm. And I was racing up this mountain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can drive up there. Yeah. And in the last second, it, it already turned up. I ran out of the car, grabbed my camera. My poor camera is really beaten up. Uh, took the picture and it was gone. So this is how actually usually mm -hmm. my day in the field looks like. I race okay. from one highlight to another one. Yeah. Um, But at the same time, lately I started, um, I think I posted on Facebook and Instagram, I actually enjoyed taking my little mobile and setting it up on the beach and just recording a sunset or uh, on mm -hmm. the beach. And doing like a time lapse or just like Well, a... I do a lot of time lapse work. Um, I, have, oh, I have so much gathered, I actually have to start to publish it and share it. But that is another aspect I truly enjoy right now. There's no effect to it. It's just nature and The response is incredible. I get so many emails from people who, who grew up here, who follow me on, in, on social media, and they thank you. I feel so connected, you know, mm -hmm. so you can see your, the land you love or as a tourist, the, the place you adore and come yeah. return every year. Yeah. And you see one to one how the sunset looks like and so on. So um, that is something where I can just sit down and really relax, you yeah. know. But so you never perceive that as an, any any problem or anything that you have to figure out to not get cold or not get wet or anything. It's just no, the time lapse always um, so because you have to stay quite long there mm -hmm. and sometimes have the problem with freezing feet. But right, no, usually right. I'm, I'm I'm and because you see human mind if the human mind is inspired, which I'm always am when I'm out there, you have an energy inside you glow. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like the mind heats you up, your excitement, your passion, your uh, enthusiasm, and it's the best heating, being happy. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, the question was like, obviously, when you're, when you're going up a mountain or, or you know, the weather is changing and, you know, the, you, you kind of get cold in the morning and then the sun comes up, you get, you, get, you know, especially when you're moving around a lot. Oh, yeah. The so. onion technique, right? So you, you're prepared for everything. Oh, that's what I see. This is that's, <laughs> that's what you do. Yeah. You, and you do you, you, you uh, get down to your favorite pieces so you know uh, uh, you leave at sunshine uh, with sunshine at the bottom of the mountain and mm -hmm. when you're up there you suddenly get like frostbites yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. you have your little and how are you pieces. planning looking weather wise are you are you kind of looking at the forecast and plus your your local knowledge and you say like well you know i'm gonna go there in, on wednesday because it's gonna be is, is yeah. that like a, this kind of uh, elaborated way of planning to the weather or you're just taking that every day and it's like you know i'm going out every day to do the photos and whatever and you just well, adjust to the weather mm. well it's both it's intuitive and um you know sometimes i just follow my nose and my nose says things which don't make sense but i trust my guts mm -hmm. so let's say on the right there's people not doing that the people doing that not too often right that's, that's, that's what we not yeah. do yeah we should do it more but trust that's your what guts. nature does it, yeah. it triggers that voice in you because mm. you get grounded in nature and mm. you as i said your mind shuts up you know mm. and there's mm. no talk in you so you hear mm. your voice so in, uh, on the right you might see a stunning sunset and the logic would be going right yeah And my gut tells me, no, turn around and go left. And I said, that doesn't make any sense. And mm. I do it anyway. And then yeah. these are the moments when I get these things like war. Oops. Yeah. 
where did this came from? So I have this and then satellites are my best friends mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I need to know how the clouds are. It's um, I, I like to control it a bit because mm -hmm. I, I know when the magic happens and when not. You know, I know days, oh, there's no point going out. Mm -hmm. Maybe all gray and I, oh, today's rainbow light. Today, tomorrow is puffy cloud light or so. Yeah. But it's it's only 24 hours. So usually yeah. I spontaneously need an hour beforehand to say, okay, now I can go. And it doesn't cover a big radius. So I never know what's going on in Kelani. That's why I hardly get up there. Mm -hmm. I'm busy down here and I yeah. can smell yeah. the magic here. Yeah. But it's, it's also too hard to leave here in those moments to go off to somewhere like Kelani yeah. or Dingle or anywhere further mm -hmm. because you know it's going to be like this here. You, and this is your where you've chosen to live. This is your home. Yeah. So you're you're capturing here, you know. And I yeah. also go to many locations, many more, many times. So, and oh, today would be a good day to go to the standing stones, right? Mm -hmm. Because I see the amazing cloud structure. Or on rainy days, I focus on the close-ups because you, or on super clear days, which we have five per year. Yeah. <laughs> That's Obviously, about right. you will go up a mountain and get the big views, right? So I always work with nature. She's like a partner to me, a friend. And yeah. I, I, she's the boss, no question. I follow mm -hmm. gratefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm, I'm surprised that you're when you're doing time lapses, you kind of stick around with your with your camera. I thought I was just gonna put the camera and go home and come back next day. Uh, no, because you have to adjust. The light is constantly changing, and you have to manually. Oh, adjust you're it. you're adjusting during the time lapse. Oh yeah, well. Oh, wow. That's the reason why my time lapses uh, look like how they look. Mm. Like if you're interested as a listener um, on YouTube, on my channel, Madeline Maria Weber, I uploaded some really stunning time lapses. And I constantly had to adjust yeah. exposure and so on. So I have okay. to stick around. It's a bit boring though. Yeah. Because the fascinating thing about time lapse is like there is one time lapse of a sunrise uh, in ladies view near Kilani, mm -hmm. a misty sunrise. And... I was standing there two hours recording and my eyes couldn't perceive much. So just a slight movement of the fog. And once I processed the time lapse uh, at home, oh my God, like it's out of, it's not in the range of our human perception. This, mm -hmm. if you jump time, the, the fog moved like water. He saw it, I think, yeah. right in the, yeah. it was like an ocean. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, you, 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 there was like a, like a thermal effect to them and they're going up and yeah. down and all that. Uh, it was like a, like a, you're like, whoa. <laughs> you know, and I love that. Like, this is, I, think, I think my secret to happiness is, first of all, I found paradise, which is Kerry. There's nothing more beautiful than Kerry. <laughs> okay, right. that's my way. I know there are other people. With just other... be careful because the people, we have like a, you know, a whole you know, like a wave of people coming <laughs> to Kerry now. <laughs> all those empty be beaches will be gone. <laughs> um I feel like, yeah, so I'm in paradise and I feel like I'm, I, I'm constantly a child. Mm, that's it's, a big thing. That's a big thing. I'm like a, ch a happy child playing with rocks, so to speak. Right. And I'm having a blast. Like, um, I, I feel like this is what nature triggers in you because our first connection as a child is we go out, we find rocks, we, we take sand and cook for the family with sand and leaves, right? And it's so beautiful that's a peace of mind of a child which we mm -hmm. all lose on the way through mm -hmm. adulthood and mm -hmm. all that crap which comes mm -hmm. with it <laughs> we, we're getting cynical yeah so whatever you can find to come back into your childlike state of mind mm -hmm. go for it yeah yeah and um, so and um when i came to ireland actually i started also doing a bit of land art which means you create a piece of art, of conceptual art in nature with a piece of nature. So I would go to a beach and find these incredible rocks and I would pick small white rocks, big white rocks in a row, mm -hmm. put them like a snare, like a, like a circle, like, yeah. you know, you reflect your thoughts with natural materials and you don't present it in a museum, but in nature and then nature takes it back. It's a childlike mm -hmm approach to art and yeah. i love it I'm, I'm sitting there two hours searching for rocks and i'm having the best time of my I life know, i know right <laughs> and again that's a, that's something that is on the on the podcast quite often like a benefits for outdoors for mental health and that's exactly what you're yeah, saying like, you will you, get you just, sane you, there <laughs> yeah you get leave all the crap and it's like oh i'm focusing on this, this stuff. yeah what's your what's your take on uh editing photos in a in a, mm -hmm. in a software i had a you know number of 
conversation on a podcast and, and not only on a podcast. And usually there are two types of people. People say, yeah, absolutely. You do editing. You're, you know, you're mm. making picture better. And I'm not, I'm not, <clears throat> maybe just to clarify, I'm not telling, saying about, mm -hmm. you know, modifying the photos to make like a look it unnatural, right? Like a super, you know, colors of the scale or anything like that. But just, you know, some post uh, production, I, I don't know what's the word, like after taking photo, making it look better. And there's another group of people who's like, no, no, absolutely not. You know, you need to take a good photo and with a good camera and I'm mm. you're not doing this. And they're giving examples of some, um, I think that Nat Geo was doing like a uh, contest, but for non-edited photo mm -hmm. and, and stuff like yes. that. What's, what's, your, what's your take on that? Well, it's a very complex one. So I started with the dark room. I know the times when I was spending over the chemicals and, you mm. know, so I came from that school. <laughs> and when the digital age arrived, I was like, uh, no, I don't want it. No, you mm -hmm. know, really stubborn. Mm -hmm. And then one day it just changed and I got my first digital camera and I realized the benefits of it mm -hmm. and the downsides to it because you can just shoot unlimited, you know, and you end up with a thousand pictures, very yeah. unfortunate. So, but in the process of dealing with the digital world, obviously when you're in a dark room, you adjust the picture, you balance a little bit the darks and the brights. You exactly. Can do that. You have no question. You have to, you, 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 you have through to. this process yes. anyway. And, uh, in now in the digital age where Photoshop and all these digital softwares, they're used in many different ways. And I think the intention counts. So you have a group of people who take rather a boring picture and then they turn a blue sky into a purple one and they move a mountain around and that's fair if that's that's good that's one way of dealing with it you know uh, if they sell it as a montage or oh look i created that magical moment i didn't see it you know mm -hmm. there's a certain honesty which has to come with it and then there are people who good use point. We need to use the software to process the digital files, right? Because on the ship, there's just a file. You can't do anything with it. So you have mm -hmm. to run it through a software. The way how I use it is very different. For me, first of all, I own, I, I, I think I already said that I don't take pictures if I don't shake because mm -hmm. I'm not interested in boring moments. Mm -hmm. I take cracking pictures, which in, this, in their essence are already strong. And now here comes a big problem, which everyone s seems to overlook. They, for some reason, when painters painted realistically, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you would get your granny, a portrait of granny and of daddy and whatever. So then the medium of photography came in and for some reason uh, attached was this label of reality. Oh, photography is real, right? Mm. Because yeah. it's not painted, it's real, it's real yeah. what's there. No, it's not real because a camera lens and a ship is or a film is very limited if you compare the quality of your eyes like we are so sensitive our eyes balance contrasts out our brain interprets the image you know and then we okay. see a camera can only see now the software is getting very good now in the cameras already mm -hmm to balance out the harsh contrast. But usually what you, what happens is you have a cracking sunset and you either have, you focus on the dark or the bright areas. So you either see nothing in the dark area because they're overexposed yeah. or you see nothing in the sky. So you end up with these beautiful pictures with a white sky. No, mm -hmm. that wasn't reality, was it? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> for me being very conscious about my eyes because I'm very a visual person, that's where mm -hmm. my, ex, my, my entrance of happiness comes through, so to speak. Um, I know exactly how it looked like because I'm also a painter. So mm -hmm. I, I know the colors, how they wear. And I realized very quickly, hang on, that's not what I saw. Mm -hmm. So I use a digital software to bring the first manipulation through the camera back to its original state. Right. So I know my memory of the picture and um, I have developed... You're trying to get it more real. I have developed certain techniques um, to bring it back to what it was. Now, you, you always get these kind of people who say, oh, is that real? I cannot imagine. Or did you put mm -hmm. the mount? And that's okay. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, ask me a question. I will mm -hmm. respond to it. But mm -hmm. what people often forget is like, I'm have I'm living in a den in a, such high density of magical moments here, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm always out there. You have to bring yourself out there first of all to witness it. So mm -hmm. when everybody's sleeping, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm somewhere in You're the carry out <laughs> carry forest or whatever, <laughs> taking pictures of the stars. Nobody mm -hmm. saw them, right? Mm -hmm. I did. Or uh, an incredible sunset, like 
this one here. The, um, if you go on my website and type in golden skellig sunset, um, wow. there, this is pure magic. And it's on the edge of, I never saw something like that. Is it mm -hmm. real, you know? Yeah. So I, I have, I'm not interested in creating images out of Photoshop. Yeah. Why would I do that? Yeah. It's a certain direction of art. Some people do that consciously and mm -hmm. good for them. It's not my cup of tea though. Yeah. It's so, interesting. It's interesting that you, what you said, that you kind of are actually using editing to make a photo look like a scene you saw in the first place. Yeah, because so. then it's different when it's captured on a, on a photo. That's that's very interesting. I never I never heard that that approach. Yeah. But what's your yeah. well, as soon as you use anything mechanical like a camera or mm. the same for audio, like a microphone, yeah, you're changing the original sound mm -hmm. because all those systems, no matter how they good or how how good they get or how good they are right now, mm -hmm. they're altering that sound. So it's the same in audio when you record something, like in a studio, you're you're using different uh, filters and plugins or ways of what you know how to do things to bring it back to how you heard it originally you know yeah so i mean for me for madeline's work i see it as bringing you back into that moment of how it really was you know mm -hmm. the real sea experience you are standing there you're looking at it and yeah. that that's that's i think that's what, what you do that's a very interesting point that's actually a very interesting point it never never come 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 before but it's you know it's a very good one because like you said it's already kind of processed version yeah, of a yeah. and is it like in your case is it the same goes for the like a noise removal and all that yeah 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 so what, what you so do. so you 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 think like in, when you're removing noise is it like bringing it back to the natural what it was or, or is it like removing natural aspect um because you know like you you're you you have a recording right and you have a certain amount of noise and then yeah. there's an some some aspect of the background noise that is there from the nature and then there's a certain you know amount of the background noise that goes from from your preamps and your mic yeah, and all yeah. that and all that so you you're 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 when you're removing that you feel like you're adding something you're, you're removing some aspect of a natural thing that was there or you or you feel like you know i'm you bring it back to that because you really when you're out there you're not noticing the background noise too much right? yeah i try to limit that as much as possible and that really is down to the quality of equipment mm -hmm. you use you know especially for nature recordings because often the sound is so low in level yes that if you don't have a, a certain quality of like microphone or preamps or digital recorder you're going to have a very high background noise that's mm -hmm. the noise of the electrical system mm -hmm. it's not actual real noise yep um so and i don't i, I will do my best not to mm -hmm. mess with that i'll either try and go and just improve my equipment over time which I've, yeah. i have i have done this year um mm -hmm. that makes a big difference yeah and as soon as you go into using um kind of noise removers and that kind of stuff you'll hear it very quickly it can it can take away the actual natural sound you know yeah yeah so well, i would prefer even to have it at a lower level to listen to it so you're still getting that pure mm. sound say of the birds flying over the estuary here yeah which is just i find a, a sound that's out of this world yeah it's yeah. it's so peaceful and calm yeah um and uh th that sound reverberates around the history too it's like it's bouncing off something i'm not sure what it is but it must be made of water or something yeah. as well and you get this natural reverb of the place back here you know yeah that's yeah. that's interesting man because you know like for the podcast all those recorders even the one that we're using right now they really meant for uh like a music recording like a live performances yeah mm -hmm. so they're kind of built to record on the high level high yeah, volume so levels so they have a noisy preamps yeah because you don't care and now in the setting like here when we're talking you know you know you, you to have a decent recording you need to put the levels up and that then when you hear the preamps and then you need to remove it i'm yeah. removing noise all the time <laughs> that's like the first thing i do <laughs> you're losing some quality from the, the voices i've seen you know as yeah. well so that's just yeah. a part of how yeah. it is you know? i'm in a good situation that you know being being like a digital radio show it's more important what we're saying not like a quality of this mm. of the voice so that's easier but i totally get what you're saying i was trying to record a uh, birds in a tree once in a in a in a forest in a, in the woods um and it was a nearby there was a road it was like very silent car right so i was kind of 
adjusting um, levels to kind of capture voices that song bird song and then the car just went like, Whoa! <laughs> i was like i didn't realize you know then when i was when i was when i was uh listening to the recordings like how that how noisy that was and i think yeah. there's an element when you're here and like you like mentally like you say your brain is processing things and you kind of focus on those birds so your brain already filters out the noise that you're not interested in in that case car and then when you're recording and you go just goes through the through the electronic equipment you actually figure out that that noise of the car is much much louder than you thought yeah more present yeah com compared to the to the to the noises right and it's really because the sound is still there we still hear it but because we're not focused on it, we don't hear it yeah and it's the same as, as the reason why the sound of a baby crying is the most annoying sound mm. nearly there is because it's designed to be that it's way designed to be that way that's that's yeah. where our ears are more sensitive for because it's a danger yeah you know, it's the same uh, area that our voices come out sound wise mm -hmm. so anything that's on the lower oh. end the deep sounds are the very very high high sounds we don't hear as well as the 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 the, the, the sounds in our vocal range for example yeah yeah and that's the same with the photos, right? You're, you're, you, do, you, do you tend to not see things? And then, yeah. and then you look at a photo and you go like, oh, I didn't realize that thing was there. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I live here now for 13 or 14 years, I forgot. <laughs> um, and I think, was that house there? Yeah, mm. Madeline, the house is standing there forever. I said, never noticed that house. <laughs> or when you take a picture, obviously your focus is so small as a, in this wild Atlantic wave picture, I was focusing on the shapes of the wave and the color that mm -hmm. was my got my attention. I never noticed actually the cliffs behind it. Yeah. So and once I looked at the picture at home, I said, Jesus, I didn't see that. So it's like just a normal processing way how our brain works. And that's the beauty of nature because it has such variety of <laughs> focus points. Mm -hmm. You 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 never get bored. Yeah. Like, or, uh, the last three years I spent on a project with wildflowers, which I will publish soon. And um, before that, I thought I know the landscape here. And mm. once my focus was locked in on the wildflowers, I was like, oh, my God. There are so many I didn't notice look at before. These wild I never noticed them. And look how incredible they are. And suddenly I just see wildflowers everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, everything else goes yeah. in the background. So there is this, there, this is this this thing in psychology. Um, that that explains you know how to how to get happy that in the example is like if you want to buy you know car and you want to buy yellow ford focus and mm -hmm. then you're driving around all of a sudden you see yellow ford focuses everywhere mm -hmm. because your brain is kind of your antenna is up for this sort of thing and this is why uh, there's this technique like write down one thing that made you happy every day mm -hmm. because that unconsciously makes your antenna up for the things that make you happy rather than things that are bad and and so this is this is the real this is real thing yeah i think it's a thinking dynamic like thoughts uh, without going into spiritual schools mm. now here um, attract and certain focus points and it's the same as nature so if you want to have a good start in the morning and you are blessed or your life al allowed you to live in nature you know mm -hmm. not in the city um go out in the morning at resort the whole day because yeah. you you start very clear you're getting you know blown through so yeah. to speak <laughs> uh you you got maybe some candy for your eye with a nice sunrise or even if it's raining you feel alive mm -hmm. so i cannot uh, say that often enough like nature is free it's out there it's available at any time and yes it looks different wherever you are right now on on earth right yeah but even in a city you there usually a, there's a nice park somewhere but you have to make the conscious decision to give it space so create time slots for it and just see what it does to you it's the best thing you can do for yourself absolutely mm -hmm. i just wanted one more question one more about the photo editing and what's your what's your take on photo editing but in a in a sense of like you know removing cables that went into the photo or you know you have a you have a beautiful picture of the landscape but mm -hmm. you take it from the road and in your frame there is a, like a yeah. you know poles and then the, so th this is kind of some I argue kind of invasive mm -hmm. intervention in the photo um what's your take on that I, I 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to bias your, your answer. Oh, no, I'm, sure, no. I'm, sure, I'm sure I wouldn't. No, I think it's a, I'm just, I'm just very important the question because yeah. I get these questions a lot, funny enough. Right. Well, because a lot of people try to find a solution there for themselves as well. Like, mm -hmm. how, how, what, what take should I take, so to speak? Um, what I do is usually, obviously, I am, the biggest effort for me goes into creating the best picture. So if I know there is an object which... Mm, I will find another perspective and remove it, but mm -hmm. there's a certain fine line and I will spontaneously decide what that is. So if I have, let's say, a big landscape picture and the story is stunning and there's like this one telegraph pole in the background, like mm -hmm. two centimeter t tall, I have no problems removing that. And yeah. I don't see how this would interfere with the reality of the picture, yep. you know, or you have there, uh, you, you didn't notice some dirt there or whatever. So. It's it's a very gentle touch up, um, if at all, you know. Yeah. I I don't need it usually because um, the pictures are always taken having that in mind already. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, the best yeah. thing is like don't have it in the in the first place. But I think that sometimes, and I, and I don't know if it's the case with you, but it's certainly the case with me that sometimes you're, like you say, so in shock in a positive way, right? You shake and say, "Oh, it's so beautiful." Mm -hmm. But like we said before, you don't see it. <laughs> Right, you don't yeah. you don't see it. You take yeah. a photo and then you you look at it. And say, I have this beautiful photo. And look at it. Oh crap! Right, you have a like a pole or something in it. Yeah, like, ah, you know you get a. But then, it, really, I think, and, and you can elaborate on that. I don't want to put the words in your mouth, but I, you're creating art, not the document, right? So right. so I don't think it it makes any difference if you're if you remove some object that is you know obstructing the view or is like not looking nice you're not trying to document mm. that there is a pole in, in the middle of a beautiful landscape you're trying to create you know express your kind of feelings and and, and show the beauty of it rather than anything else there yeah right? that's a that's a very good point yeah so and every artist has to decide to him or herself then where mm. where is the line right but we have i mean there, I, I remember there was once a woman, I took a picture from a certain perspective and she saw the picture and she said, she's a local, so she grew up here, she's now 50 or so. Mm -hmm. Madeline, you moved that mountain. That mountain is not there. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, what do I say? I can't win now, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I, well, if there's one thing is I'm not moving mountains. There's no reason to move mountains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah? Um, so it was really funny. Um, but um, yeah, sure, and that's that's. How did why it end up? Did you did you? She wouldn't believe me, but that's yeah. uh, you know that's okay. Being grounded. Okay. In it. I know my. So you didn't. So you didn't okay. even try. I celebrate that for okay. her. Okay. I, I didn't need to convince her, but she probably sings. Hope, let's hope she doesn't tell everyone. Madeline is moving mountains. Moving mountains. Yeah. Well, I think that, that was what the McGillicuddy Reeks that you you can when you walk on Reen Road yeah, and if it's Reen clear Road. enough, mm -hmm. you can see the McGillicuddy Reeks. You, you can see Karen Tuhill. Yeah. But just most of the time <laughs> that it's. It's you can't see that far because it's yeah. hazy. You know? But in fairness, uh, what I noticed was a lot of locals who love a lot of my pictures too. And um, like just on the side in the first year when we opened, they were very shy to come in, you know, because mm -hmm. they didn't know oh, what is that and do I need to buy them something? You know that pressure you feel mm -hmm. when you go into a shop. Mm -hmm. And once I was like, no, please just come in and enjoy it. I want mm -hmm. to show you what I captured. It's also your land, you know. Mm -hmm. So we got loads of locals and then referrals, obviously. And um, it's fascinating to see them because they know the landscapes in many different shapes and forms and to see them, to observe them, to having a blast here. I love that. But one thing which uh, I notice is as soon as you take a telephoto lens, so a really mm -hmm. long uh, lens, it distorts the space so what it does it compresses the space so let's say the valencia lighthouse mm -hmm. and i take a picture with a really long lens on it dingle in the background you can see the blaskets mm -hmm. they would look very close right mm -hmm. now that's obviously a style element like i decide with my lenses how i want to tell the story and my purpose is not to um, distort and picture but yeah. it changes the reality naturally so yeah. to speak yeah and i remember a lot of Hang on, between Dingle and the lighthouse, these are what, how many miles? <laughs> mm. uh, what did you do there? You know, so there are some misunderstandings. Yeah. So I can understand why people... Not understanding the technique. Uh, yeah, what did she do? Some, what, what did she do? What, but most of the time I don't have that. Um, and another point which op often happens is because I bring the picture back to what it was. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of people think they're paintings. Hmm. And I was thinking about yeah, they 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 like, look like paintings. Yeah, this they, is so fascinating. Do. Why do they say that? They and do. I come to the conclusions because the realistic painter they painted exactly what they saw mm -hmm. from their mm -hmm. memory, mm -hmm. so they had the exact light. How many of them painting and from some, the from the well, photo? Obviously, but we just yeah, but those who stand there and really capture the light, they get the you know the light. That's that's another thing. The light has a law. And I feel that intuitively some some things don't work. I can see exactly when somebody did something to a picture because <laughs> I know nature's light does not work like that, you yeah. know? So I have a good radar there, but pff, there's no purpose for that. But um, the painters got the light correct and that's in our genes, that memory of the paintings, you know, of that really magical light. And I think, yeah, that's how they associated with my pictures, because that's the authentic light of the moment. Yeah. Even they that. never maybe saw it in their life, like this one down there. If you go on the website, it's called Mystical Skellig Sunset. Mm. I took this picture in 2009 and, and it was mind blowing the moment because I was driving around and everything was dull and gray. And I was like, oh, Jesus, now I'm here in the car. I need to find something. Mm -hmm. There's always something. Where is it? Mm -hmm. And I drove up the mountain over to St. Finian's Bay. And as soon as I came over that hill, there was like a different climber zone. Yeah. There was this, ma this cloud in slow motion, really low above the water surface moving. No sound, nobody there. It was surreal as if I was alone on the planet. Mm. And I started shaking because the sunset light hit the cloud from behind and oh, I, I, I wish, I wish I would have had a video camera to mm -hmm. show you because yeah. that's exactly how it was the light as as mind-blowing as it looks nature can look like that you know yeah. that's what i live for like oh yeah absolutely yeah. The spectacles of nature and right. the funny thing is then when people come in here i can see you know different nature and people different mm. pictures they love and people who love this picture usually are mm -hmm. people who um they're very uh if how do you say not internal uh, uh, they are going Introvert. in, in you no, know, they go in themselves a lot. Yeah, it's because that's the energy of the spot. You know, it's a very quiet. There's not much action happening, but there's a, a quietness and a magic in it, which I don't know. It, it leads you inside of you. I, I can't put my finger on it. What it is, yeah. yeah. And then we have the wild Atlantic wave, which it doesn't matter who comes in here, what kind of nature they are from. They can all connect with that picture. Yeah. And we, I was theor I, we have theories developed with every visitor. What is it actually that touches us in it? And I think the biggest part is it is the color, and it is this, uh, observing the different mm. shapes of the water, which looks stunning in itself from a secure point. You know? Yeah, it's, the sh it's, a, it's, a, it's like a yeah. capture in the time of this because normally yeah. they're very dynamic, and it's like a capture the dynamic yeah. aspect, but it's still. And you see uh, every shape from a little drop to the big gish mm -hmm. on the cliffs. And yeah. I can't tell you like that, that picture traveled mm. all over the world now. And mm. it's, and it's just one tiny little moment. Yeah. And it's all in it. Yeah. And when you look at it, even because we live here in our gallery mm. as well, it just gives you that bounce. Right. Mm. So uh, isn't that magic? <laughs> it is. Do you do you sometimes have a, like a, like people coming in and telling you that you move the mountain or something? Do you have something like you know just enjoy it, just shut up and enjoy it? Why do you have to dig into <laughs> like whether I move the mountain? Who cares? Yeah, no, rarely. Like let's say out of hundred people, one person might uh, right. be be like that. But okay. um, it, our normal experience actually is because when you see the house from outside, it looks like a normal house, and you mm. say. Mm -hmm. Should I go in there or not? Right. <laughs> and so they have to overcome this first mm -hmm. worry. And mm -hmm. then they come in, they don't know what to expect. And yeah. then we open the door and woof, and there it yeah. is, you know, and they're yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. So you cannot describe it. You have to see it uh, and experience it. It's, it's, it's very different. I, I so love people seeing, being inspired. Uh, that, that, that. That, make, that makes sense. And that really makes sense to what you do and, and, and mm. all that. Listen, tell us how to how to get in touch with you, how to, you know, on the on the internet on social media, see the uh, see your work. And then if anyone wants to buy it, where you where to find you. And yeah. Do you sell online as well. Huh? Do you sell online as well? Oh, yeah. So right. you can either go to my website. It's um, 
God, that's a complicated name. www.madelinemariaweber.com. So should I spell it or do you put it in a? I will. I'll pull it anyway. Yeah. I'll put it anyway. Do you get, mm -hmm. can you get like a like a uh, like a for the marketing purpose like a shorter domain? Uh, well, hmm, I might think. Or you just it. have your ratings There's a lot of twisters in there. I know. M a d e l e i n e m a r <laughs> IAWEBER.com. Well, we're gonna we're gonna put the, we, <laughs> for sure we're gonna yeah. we're gonna put that on the on the show notes and uh, all over social media. So yeah. you can uh, find my whole catalog of images, uh, mainly focused on Southwest Kerry between mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kelt and Sneem. Um, my big baby is a Skellix. Um, Uh, so uh, you see all sizes and prices there, or you can call into the gallery, which is located on the road R567 between Waterville and Balance Galax, County Kerry. And we are usually open from 10 to 6 during the summer and winter. You know, it gets uh, quickly early, so probably till 5. Mm -hmm. Or you can just call me um, uh, if you would like to arrange an appointment. And it's, I always say it's good to call in if you're around because mm -hmm. you get a feeling for the size. And there's a big difference looking at pictures online and standing in front of it Absolutely. and get the full blast. Absolutely. You know? And also on social media, right? <laughs> you're, you're on Instagram. Yeah, I'm on Facebook, um, facebook.com Madeline Maria Artist and on Instagram Madeline Maria Weber. Um, and I will on a regular base upload there also some actual sunsets of the day. So mm. that's a good way to connect also with Carrie. I, I love to be a channel there in that way as well. Sure, sure. Yeah. And Gregor, do you do you have some of your online your 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 work or you just uh, not a, not as yet no mm. uh, it's kind of a, but it's coming it's coming yeah all right I'm still I'm, I suppose building up a library I I kind of do a number of different things all based in the audio world so mm. I'd be a musician so I'd play sometimes in pubs locally right. or a bit up further up the country right um, that's when I fell in love with him I heard him sing mm. Mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> awesome <laughs> I also do like live sound productions right so there's a few events in the year I'd be involved in so this year we had the Amgen Salsa's Poetry Gathering in June so right. I provide all the live sound and lighting for that hmm. um, I've also been involved in the Hearsay International Audio Arts Festival wow. which is actually happening again next April and that's in Kilfinnan County Limerick it's a fantastic mm -hmm. A uh, festival based on radio audio production. Right, and it's 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 uh, incredible um, variety of people in that field. You know, it'll be over four days, and you got maybe eighty plus different events going on mm -hmm. over that time. Um, uh, and also the Listowel Endurance Festival, or do live sound set up there. So it's a mixture of, through the years of, of events mm -hmm. like that. You know. Great, uh, and I, I love I love love doing doing that type of work as well. We'll get you on the podcast again when you're going to be launching your website. Yeah, <laughs> just, to, just to give you the push. All right, any concluding thoughts? Any any message mm. for our listeners? Anything? Well, yeah, I mean, there are two levels to it. So you either um, make a conscious decision and spend more time in nature and be blown away by it, or surround yourself with magic pieces like. And it's not a theater pitch right now. I mean that serious. Like your walls are your home mm. and whatever picture or whatever object you choose to surround yourself with has a huge influence on your mind. And even you don't look at it consciously, it will it will go into your mind and affect your emotional state. So I always say if you find pictures are very powerful, find a picture which speaks to your heart, which grounds you, which either connects you with your homeland or a beautiful memory and Put it on your wall and surround yourself with it, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, that's one way of connecting with it. And um, the other thing I just want to say um, quickly is Skellig Michael. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Because I was thinking about it, um, uh, what, what is the magic of that place? Mm -hmm. And I realize, or oh, that's my theory at least, um, the whole journey, like people in the, in, in the bay, they think, oh, the ocean is very nice today. As mm -hmm. soon as they go on the open sea, they're getting shaken <laughs> up by the sea, right? So they, they, they're forced into a fear in themselves, survival fear. That's the first step of bringing them into the moment, into the now. And then they're like in fear and uh, arrive at the rock, which looks like a, there's just the rock and it's green, mm. looks amazing. Mm. And once you enter the island, uh, you are now physically challenged, really mm -hmm. challenged to get up. And all these little steps, all they do is they bring you into the moment, shut mm -hmm. up your mind, mm -hmm. 
No future potential, no past pain, nothing. There's just you, that rock, and mm -hmm. your strength and your yeah. physical beingness of that mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the first time a lot of people actually spend time with themselves. Which people are these days often afraid of. Uh, yeah, we, we all run, you know, we have all our demons in the closet yeah. or skeleton. No, how do you say it? You know, the German <laughs> way of saying never yeah, works. Yeah, in yeah, Irish. I, <laughs> I always say, I'm dancing on many weddings and they all look, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Which means you're working on a lot of projects yeah, in German, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Skellig is a beautiful way of connecting with you uh, because mm -hmm. you're here right now and there's just this rock and it's not asking anything from you except being focused, looking after yourself and take in the magic right and so i highly recommend uh, going out there and bring go there with deep respect as much as you love that rock don't take a rock with you you know yeah. i know you want to bond with it but don't leave it there yeah. no a lot of people take any other rock somewhere else no one can tell <laughs> you. you can pretend <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of puffins nesting. Um, mm. Most people are not aware that their nests are next to the steps, you know. So mm -hmm. just treat it like gold. It's it's the most magical place on earth. It's my favorite place. And um, yeah, that's a reason why I live here, because of Skellig Michael. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Greg, any concluders? I, I think for me, it's to take the time to listen. You know, when... If you get a chance to go to the beach and it's part of your daily routine for exercise, you know, that's great. Go there, get your walk in. But like when you finish a walk or halfway through, just stop for a few minutes, you know, just stand and look out the ocean and close your eyes, take in the space, you know. Mm. Uh, I think we just a lot of time we forget to do those things because our lives are so busy now. We're so we have to go here. We have to go there. We have to do this. Um, yeah. Do you know, to give that our mind a chance to just slow down, slow down and relax, you know. Because we, we have mm. to, you know. And and the other, other big one, which I, I absolutely love, when the weather is good enough going to the beach, take off your shoes and socks and walk with your feet in the sand. Ah, that's a very you know, good one. And pull up your, your pants, your trousers, your knees, and walk along the water, you know, and feel the water coming up mm. to close your knees and the, the power of the energy of the waves coming in and out. Mm. I just, I, I adore that, you know. And I understand on a bad day, you know, you don't want to be taking your shoes and socks off because it's freezing, but on, 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 on a good day, why wouldn't you? You know, you can just wipe the, the sand off your feet when you get back and they'll be dry by the time you get back anyway. This is, this is awesome advice. <laughs> yes, also, I, love I love it. I love it. Uh, folks, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I, I, think, I think you're doing excellent work here and it's, it's beautiful and, and the place you live is, is absolutely amazing. I hope that the people uh, will, will listen to that podcast and they're going to, you know, flock here and uh, mm. just just to experience that and and kind of see the nature to your eyes and ears Thank and you, um thanks Sammy. that's it thanks a lot <laughs> cheers <laughs>